As a portrait photographer, sometimes your clients might want you to add some special effects to your photos after the fact. For example, a popular method is this pop-up effect or pop-out effect. So you can have people pop out a photo sideways like this or from below. I'll show you how to do this with a couple quick and easy steps. So go ahead and open up a photo that you want to work with. And we need to duplicate this layer twice. So on the PC, press Control J twice. On the Mac, press Command J twice. So now we have three identical layers. Let's go ahead and make this background layer a solid color. So she's some kind of foreground color. And then press Alt Backspace on the PC or Option Delete on the Mac. Now let's add a new layer. So create a new layer icon on the bottom layers panel and drag it so it's second from the top. So if it's on the top, just drag it down below that layer. So now we have two photo layers and then a transparent for now layer and then a background layer that has a solid filled color. Make sure you have this transparent layer selected and let's go ahead and make a selection with a rectangular marquee tool where you think the photo would be. So something like that. You can of course hover and click and drag it after the fact. Now let's go to edit and then stroke and set the color. I would do white for the border of a photo but we can choose whichever color. Then for width it's going to depend on how big your photo is. If you have a very large photo with high resolution, very large dimensions, you'd want to do more than this maybe but I'm just going to do 30 pixels. If you have a smaller photo like say 800 by 600 pixels or 72 pixels per inch. You could do even like 10 pixels or 12, 15, something like that. But I'm going to do 30, kind of experiment with the size. Make sure blending mode is set to normal and opacity 100%. So I'm going to click OK. Hit the eye icon of this top layer so that we can see through so there's no visibility to the top layer for now. And then what we need to do is distort this a little bit so it has more perspective. So with this still selected, with this layer 2 still selected, go ahead and go to Edit and then transform and then perspective and what we're going to do is click and drag that in a little bit if you just click and drag one edge or one corner it'll pull the other corner in and then the bottom one click and drag it out a little bit something like that now if this is too high or low you can't really edit it right now we need to press enter to apply those changes and then go back to go to edit and then free transform then you can move it up and down with that top rung there something like that and for this example, maybe we'll just pull down even more and press enter. So it'll look a little bit different than the example I already did and this one too. All right, so now we can deselect. If you, if you still have it selected, that's great. If you don't, let's say we clicked off somewhere and we don't have it selected, just hold control on the PC or command on the Mac and just click that layer that has the picture frame on it. We can rename it too to keep it straight you can just double click on that name and just go to type in picture frame so now we need to select this area around here and kind of group it with with this area so how we can do that is actually going to select and then inverse or shift control i on the pc shift command i on the mac now press q to enter quick mask mode and this area kind of turns this red tint right then choose the paint bucket tool, click and hold onto the gradient tool, select paint bucket. We just want to click out in this area here. All right, so it should look something like that. Now press Q again, and you'll notice now that just this area is selected. We could have deselected all that also by holding Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and using maybe the polygonal lasso tool and just clicking and dragging around it, but that was just a faster way to use a quick mask. Now, click on the layer one right here, this bottom photo layer, and we need to add a layer mask because when we click this add layer mask on the bottom of the layers panel, it's gonna mask out everything but this area that's selected. So go ahead and click add layer mask, and you'll notice we have the photo inside this border here. And we can adjust this. This is a mask, remember? So if you want to paint in white, you'll kind of see what would happen. If I painted in white, it would come in, but we don't have really that, the edge there, right? And also that picture frame still is in there. 
So I just did edit undo, just to kind of give you an idea, these, these masks are not really erasing. They're non-destructive erasing. We can bring back the pixels by painting white in. Painting black in will, will mask out the pixels. So the next step is to go up to layer one copy. And what we need to do there is actually make a selection. So just bring back the visibility. And depending on your photo, we just need to make a selection of this area up here and then add a layer mask. So I'm gonna use the quick selection tool and click and drag up here, something like this. And you can press the left and right brackets on the keyboard as we paint to resize or you can change it up on the options panel up here as well of course and so you see some of the hair here we can do a better job if you hold down alt on the pc or option on the mac you can subtract from an area if you hold shift it will add to or just the default you also have the options up here on the options panel Okay, so that painted on too much. So Alt or Option, click and drag it back there. All right, so that should be enough. Basically, as long as it is going down to the level of the top of the marquee selection tool that we've done. All right, so this part's not such, that's fine because the top of it's about there, but if you wanted to do that, we can just click and drag it in there. All right, there, as far as the hair up here, we can go to, we could really zoom in and just fine tune it, or we can go to select and then refine edge and then click on smart radius. Make sure you have a refine radius tool, bring the radius up a little bit and you can experiment with that. But you can also paint in, if you hold down alt or option, it will kind of remove it from. If you click and drag it in here, just click and drag without holding anything on the keyboard. It'll really improve the edge here. You'll see. But again, if you hold Alt, it'll subtract from as well. So I think that does a pretty good job. Bring it in a little bit. We'll see what it looks like. Uh, so depending on your photo, experiment with that. And the radius you can bump up and bring back and forth accordingly. And just click OK. All right. Then add layer mask to this. And you'll notice you can actually go in and change this. Paint a little bit more black in with the brush tool. Like so. So it's an editable mask, which is pretty cool. And then we can actually paint white in to bring it back. I think I missed a spot there. All right, so that is the pop out technique. All right, and this top, if you'll see down at the bottom, I actually need to bring, need to mask out this area so that the, the frame comes through. So I'll select that area. You can actually select more because it's gonna show through down to there. So. I'm just going to click and drag up to there. I need to fill that with a black, so make sure the foreground color is black. Press Alt Backspace, and there we go. And you can Alt click the masks and see what they look like for both of those. For both of those layers. All right, so that's the pop out technique. It uses just perception distortion, resizing of a border there and a couple masking techniques and so you can use this on different portraits if you want to do this from the side like this the only difference is that you would click and drag when you go to edit transform perspective just click and drag this down and then we're going to mask out from the side instead of from the top right there where they come out from the bottom so have fun with that technique this is chad from good creative academy we'll see you in the next lecture